Hi, welcome to the Gardening Corner at Pinehurst. I'm Vicki and I'm here to, we're going to talk about vegetable gardening today. This is the time you want to get going on that. Um, first of all, when you're thinking about garden, doing a vegetable garden, where are you going to put it? Are you going to grow it in the ground? Are you going to do a raised bed? Either one of those are good options. You just have to go about that a little bit different. If you're growing in the ground, you want to amend your soil and get it really good. If you're growing in a raised bed, you want a good raised bed mix in there. And I wouldn't suggest that you use any gardening soil and for sure no sand in there. Our, our clay soil and sand, if you mix those together, it just sets up like concrete. You're going to have some problems with that. But a, a good mix, and we have some that's just especially for a raised bed. Um, the other thing you need to think about is where you're going to locate it. Usually a garden likes to be in a sunny location. And that would be, I would say that it needs to get at least five to six hours of full sun to be really good. There are some things that do grow in a shadier area, but most of the things that we grow, grow in full sun. Um, so after you've figured your location and your, and your sunlight, the next thing you want to do is build your soil. And in the ground, what we want to do is you want to turn the soil and kind of loosen it up. But before you do that, I would recommend putting a, a layer of glacier gold on it. It's a compost and that is really going to help the soil. Um, and it's going to get it more loamy. It takes a long time to build up good soil. Um, and you want to, in the fall is when you really want to work on it and put in organic matter like leaves and anything, maybe something out of your compost pile, put that in there and it'll really make it better. So um, the next thing I would probably recommend that you do is turn that all into your soil. Um, if, you're, if you're prone to using manures, which are, are not the best thing to do, manure is hot and if you put it in and it's too hot, it'll just burn your plants up and you won't be able to grow in that area for a whole year. So if you want to use manures, make sure they're aged and put them on in the fall and till them into the soil, let the soil and the manure work together and break down all winter. So when you get to spring, you're ready to get going with it. Um, you wanna be careful about a compost that has manure in it that is too hot. That will also burn up your new plants and it will make it so you can't grow in there for a whole year. So be careful about that. When you are turning the soil, what we're doing is we're opening up the soil and we're getting air down in it. The roots of your vegetables need air as much as they need water. So you want to loosen that up. And I think that's especially important for your root crops like radishes and and carrots that are trying to get down in that hard soil and so just loosen that up. Another thing that I would highly recommend that you use is soil activator. It comes in a bag. It, we know to use that on our lawns because it decomposes the dead grass. But in the garden what it does, it really feeds the soil. It feeds the microorganisms in the soil and makes your soil healthy. It makes um, it drain better, it kind of loosens it up. It also works between the roots of your plant and the fertilizer to make your fertilizer that you put on your garden work better. It also helps with seed germination. And I think one of the most important things in a vegetable garden is it increases the vitamin content of your vegetables. So it's just an all around super thing to use in the garden. It's good for on your grass, your flowers, but especially in the garden. The next thing you want to do is decide what you want to grow. And I would suggest that you, you decide what you eat a lot or what you would like to eat a lot and group the things that you like to eat. Um, and figure out what it is you want to eat. Maybe you have some row crops like carrots, lettuce, 
um, or carrots and radishes or beets, things like that. But you want to um, you want to watch your sun. Some of the things in your garden are going to get taller than others, like corn. So you wouldn't want to put the corn on the side of the the garden that w it would shade the rest of the garden all day. You would want to put it in the back where it will everything's going to get sun including that corn sometimes tomatoes and when we're growing tomatoes you pretty much have to grow them in a cage because they're going to get up you can grow them on the ground but i recommend a cage so that the tomatoes aren't laying on the ground and sometimes that causes them to rot but um, a tomato cage is really good but that is also kind of tall and just kind of pay attention to what that is going to shade. Some things take more room than others. So you can tuck in lots of rows of things that don't take a lot of room. But if you're going to go, um, say you're going to grow cucumbers or um, zucchini, sometimes those things, not sometimes, those things do take a lot of um, room. And so give, you need to give them room to spread out. One thing you can do is we have some um, zucchini and we have cucumbers that are bush type. And so they, they're much more compact and they don't send the runners out like a regular one. And so you can grow a lot more in a small space. You can grow a lot of vegetables in a small space. Um, so decide what you're gonna grow. And then you have to think about what can you plant when it's still cold outside that you don't have to worry so much about the danger of frost? And there's lots of things that you can do there. We call those our cold crops. Um, some of them are cabbage and, um, and your lettuces. This is arugula and that could handle a frost. Um, then when you get into your more tender things like cucumbers or a melon of any sort um, and beans, green beans, as far as planting from seed, you would want to wait a little bit on that because those would freeze back if we did get a late frost. Um, any of your, when you do plant onions, they're kind of fun to grow. They're really fun to grow. Easy. You can use an onion set and grow them. And each one of these onion sets is going to turn in to an onion. And it's pretty easy. You can tell where the roots were and those go down and the pointed side goes up. Sometimes that's kind of hard to tell. This is a pack of onions. And what you do is you just take this out of this pack and you, you take these apart and you just put each individual onion in the ground. But you leave enough, for, onions get big, so leave enough room between the plants for you to get a nice size onion. But they're really easy to grow. They keep too, if you have a nice place to keep them, you can keep them all winter. Um, there's some things that you can grow from seed and some things you need to grow from plants. And the things you can grow from seed are peas, and by the way, peas are a cool weather crop. You could have had them in for the last six weeks and they would have just loved it. So they're also cool weather. And beans, in, in contrast to that, they're a warm weather crop. But um, some things, things like peas and beans, carrots, any of your root crops, those you want to plant from seed right directly in the ground. When it comes to um, beets also, you can, put, you can transplant them. We do have some packs of them, but you can also just sow them into the ground. And when you're sowing them, you want to be sure and try, and it's really difficult, I know, to space the seed out. And so you, um, you don't get it too thick and you give them room to grow, especially beet seed, it's relatively, it's not too small, but it's not great big to where you can put place them, but you probably could on that. But remember how big you want your beets to get and allow that much room. The good thing I'm gonna throw in here about beets is if you do just put them in a row, 
if you go out and pick the tops of them, and I wouldn't pick, I would just pick a few leaves off of each beet plant, but they are great in a salad, they're great in a smoothie, they're really good to eat, and then you can, later on, your beets will form and you can eat the beets. So you can do a couple things with that. Um, zucchini, if you wait long enough and the ground is warm, you can plant from seed and it will come right up. When you're using the seeds, I would recommend that you soak on any of your seeds, that you soak them overnight and let them get, get kind of their shell softened and then plant them and they will, um, they will sprout earlier. Of course, you cannot do that with beets, carrots, or some of the things that are really small seed. That would be impossible to do. Another thing we have over there in our seed rack are seed tapes. And they are a, a little tape and it has a seed every once in a while. So that's really handy to just, you just lay that tape down in the ground and those seeds will germinate off of that. And then they won't, you don't have to worry about spacing them out because somebody else did the work for you. So those are some of the things you want to start from seed. Um, corn is another one that is easy to start from seed, and I would definitely soak this. Um, there are several different kinds of corn, but um, you can start this also from plants, but usually we start it from seeds. Potatoes, if you want to grow potatoes, you start potatoes, you use a seed potato, and a seed potato is a potato that is grown in an area that is isolated. These come from up around, I think, Ashton. And it's an area where they don't grow regular potatoes around them. So they're isolated and they don't get disease. And, but I would get a certified seed potato. And on each of these potatoes, there's a little eye. And the eye is where they start growing from. So I would take this potato and I would cut it in half maybe even into fourths. But make sure that each piece that you have cut has at least one eye on it. And then you plant it in the ground about shovel deep. And then when it starts to come up, as it starts growing, you mound the soil up around it. And the, the new tubers, potatoes, grow up along that stem. So that's how you grow potatoes. They would be a little bit difficult to grow in a raised bed, but you know what you can do is you can grow them in a bag or you can grow them in a container and just plant them in the bottom with a little bit of soil and then as they grow, just keep adding more soil and more soil. And then when you're ready to harvest, you can just dump it out and there's your potatoes. So that's an easy way to go. Um, when you are planting, um, here's another one that you can do is asparagus. That's nice to have. When you plant asparagus, you don't harvest that the first year. You let it go to seed, and then it builds up and gets stronger and builds up in the roots. So next year, you can start to harvest. But that's a fun one to grow. Um, so when you're ready to plant, you're gonna plant you know, some things early, some things mid-season, and some things later. Things that freeze easier, easily, are your cucumbers and your um, squashes. We also have eggplant. Eggplant, I think, is a little tough, but I still would be careful about that. Tomatoes, peppers. You can get away with planting early if you give them frost protection. And some of the things that we use are with the tomato is a hot cap and this is just paper and you just put it down put some rocks or soil on it and we'll hold it down i would recommend that maybe you slit the top so some air can get in there and if it's really hot outside you want to be careful because it gets so hot inside this that it might cook your plant so you want to be careful about that here is something a little bit and that's usually one season and they're gone here's something a little bit more durable this is made out of some kind of foam, and you, it's got these stakes to hold it in. It has a hole in the top for some air. This, this one with the foam is not going to let the sun bake that tomato. It's going to be better. And 
probably the ideal thing to do is use it's called season starter. There's three of them in this bag. But they're, it's a round thing, and it's open in the middle, and it's tubes that are connected in this circular pattern. And you just fill each tube with water. And so that water heats up, and it heats the ground up, and it will really get things off to a great start. And I've used these where it got so cold that the water in these tubes froze solid but it didn't freeze the tomato. So these are great to use. The secret to these on a tomato is don't take them off prematurely. I would leave them on as late as you pos possibly can. In fact, I would leave them on until your plant grows up through the top and to the point where you think, if I don't get that off, I'm never gonna get that off. And then, then take it off. These are reusable. Just empty the water out and put in and store them in place out of the sun for next year. But those are really good. As you fill it up, the top kind of collapses, making a little hot cap for it. This works on anything. You could do this on squash. You could definitely do this on peppers, and it's great for tomatoes. When you're planting everything you know, that you buy that's, that's already growing, you want to plant it at the same depth that it's growing. You don't want to plant it any deeper. The only exception to that is a tomato. And what I would do on a tomato is I would take these two bottom leaves off. You could even take the, the third leaf off. And I would plant it that deep in the soil. And that's like four inches of that stem is going to be down in the soil. And what happens with the tomato is it will root all along that stem. And then you're gonna have this huge root system for this tomato. You're gonna to get tomatoes earlier if that happens. And they're gonna they're gonna really be good. So I, I would recommend that for sure. Now if you buy a larger tomato like this, you can you can it's got quite a bit of stuff going on down here. We have already started these low in the pots. So I don't think it is so necessary. I would not take all this foliage off of this. Now if it was just a, scent, just a single stem like that one, I would, but when it has all this side growing, I think you can leave that on and I think you'll be okay. Because this is just a better start anyway. So that's kind of about the plants to use and kind of how to care for them. The next thing we're gonna talk about is fertilizer. Um, the number, first, when you do plant them, I would always use a root stimulator. And that's when you're planting a plant in the soil, whether it's in a raised box or it's in the ground in your garden. Um, you wouldn't use this on seed, just on those plants. But it also has a, something in it that will help moisture stay close to the root system, which is important. Um, so and it has a starter fertilizer that it's gonna get the roots growing, and that's what you want growing first. Um, then the fertilizers that I would recommend that you use, this one is a tomato and vegetable food. Always on tomatoes, there are uh, fertilizers. There are three numbers. The first number is nitrogen that makes it grow green and healthy. The middle number is phosphorus. It makes it produce roots, flowers, and seeds or fruit. And the last number is potash, which just makes your plant healthy, makes it sturdy and strong. So we want our garden to produce a lot of fruit, so the or vegetables. So the middle number on this is high. This is 722.8. That's a great one for, for vegetables. The other one that is, is excellent also is a gardener special. The Gardener Special works as well on flowers. You could also use that one on flowers. But it is a 15, I mean 11, 15, 11. It's a little bit more balanced. And this is also a good one. When you're using fertilizer in a garden, I would always use a granular instead of a water soluble. Because you can buy, you can buy water soluble and you mix it with water and you spray it on or you pour it on the roots. This only lasts for a week or 10 days. 
And this, these last for like six weeks. It tells you how often to do it. You put it on at the time you plant, and then you go back and side dress later. But if you're having to put on, if you're having to go out there and spray fertilizer on every week or 10 days, you might be real enthusiastic about that right now. But let me tell you, later on, you're gonna start to wane and go, I am too tired to do that. But this will make sure your plants are fed all the time. So um, I would highly recommend that. This is a Joe's fertilizer spike for tomatoes. You can use it on peppers also. We use these at our house and our tomatoes get this big and they're just loaded. So I, I really think these work great. And you just put one on each side, it tells you how to do it, one on each side of the tomato. And then you don't, you don't need to use this, the other kinds of fertilizer. The other thing about fertilizer, don't fertilize the whole garden. Fertilize, side dress your plants and fertilize where you're gonna plant. But you don't put the whole garden really in this prime growing thing because you know what's gonna grow there are weeds. So we want to concentrate where the plants are growing. And we wanna do that sometimes with our water too. Um, when it comes to weed in the garden, weeds in the garden, we do have a product, it's um, grass and weed preventer, and it is a pre-emergent. You put, after you've got your garden all planted and it's up and growing, you can use this then. You just, saw, you just go between the rows and put it down. It won't let any weed seed germinate. So you see why you don't want that in the rows where you're going to seed. You want to have them up and growing and then you can use this. This is the only pre-emergent that is registered to use in a vegetable garden. So that's important. Here is a, a, a new um, organic grass and weed killer. You can use this in your garden. It would be good. And I think another thing that is important to do is to mulch your garden. And a great mulch is to collect your grass clippings um, and put in your garden. Just put it in thin layers so it doesn't smell and keep doing it. And make sure that you haven't used any weed control on your grass. Or if you have, you've let it go long enough that it isn't on there anymore. So that you're just using some really good grass. But that works really good. Then in the fall, you just till that in and you've got all that organic matter. Other things you can use are black plastic. You can put that out and that works good. That attracts the heat and uh, makes your garden grow faster. So one more item that we have is over the top grass killer. This is, um, this is registered. You can use um, on your strawberries or your raspberries if you have grass growing in those and you can't get rid of it. You have to mix the spreader sticker with the over the top, but that works really good. So those are just some tips to maybe make vegetable gardening fun and not have so many weeds, because that's what we get tired of doing sometimes. And our kids really get tired of that. So if you have any questions, we're always here to answer any question that you have. But have a great garden day.